Um, it's really interesting because like, I've had a quick journey uh, through Microsoft, five years, worked on a bunch of products. And I find myself in a world where actually the speakers from this morning kind of inspired the stuff that we're working on. So how do we take all these things, uh, sensors and batteries and technology and the craziness of Moore's Law and apply it to the next generation of computing? So anything from wearables through smart devices. Okay. So I like to just quickly start with like, you know, what, what do I do? I have people ask me that all the time. I don't really know what it is. What, what's your title? What do you do? I create stories is what I, I kind of said. And I talked about this a little bit last year. But at the end of the day, it's all about storytelling. What kind of experiences are we building for our consumers? And what superpowers are we giving them? How are we communicating with them? And what kind of stories are we curating? Who are the characters in those stories? And how do we build those stories? And so over the last couple of years, I've worked on things like Surface and Connect, where it's a story about taking someone and digitizing them. So we saw that nice augmented reality spectrum. And that was actually really, I've never actually seen that spectrum before. It's actually kind of perfect. I'm going to steal that and take that back. And so the current shift in technology brings with it what I call new forms of expression. So I'm going to use the metaphor of the storytelling throughout this talk. Um, and by expression, I mean it allows our characters in our stories to have different characteristics they didn't have before. Different voices, tones, they come from different places in the world. Um, is it narrated? Do they have, uh, are there multiple people talking at once? And so you see the metaphor of sensors and distributed technology. And so we kind of talked about this this morning, right? There's wireless communication is what is giving, is breeding the internet of things. It allows devices to talk to your phone, to your tablet, to other devices, to the cloud. Um, microprocessors, we clearly saw a lot about that today. It's enabling all the things we're talking about. Batteries is a fun one because it's the one that doesn't actually go with Moore's Law and it's just kicking our ass, right? So. We want to build these small embedded wearable things, but man, those batteries are still just not catching up. But there's awesome stuff happening. What I like to talk about and what I will today is the sensor side of things. So sensors give us expression and context into our talk and into our, into, our, into our stories. And so today we see a lot of these examples, right? The Nest thermostat, probably one of the more complex ones. Bluetooth headsets, you know, wearable technology. It's got communication. It's, you know, it's a couple sensors. It's a microphone. It's connectivity. Uh, very vertical scenario. Clearly our phones, uh, the scale. We all know this, the ARIA. Uh, you know, get to weigh yourself every morning and get it logged against your uh, four square check-ins and stuff like that. Always super interesting. Um, connect, it's kind of more complex. And, 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 you know, now coming with Google Glass. So let's go through like a few case studies of how these stories are created. So who knows Philips Hue? Right, one, two. Who loves light bulbs? Come on. Three, four, yeah. So Philips Hue, um, you know, we, they took the light bulb, very simple. We added wireless connectivity. It's uh, with Zigbee or, you know, over Wi-Fi. Um, and we ended up with this product, which now ships in the Apple Store. It actually is doing pretty well. Um, very simple vertical connection of this analog object to the digital world. It allows you to control the color of the light. You can address each one, so the one over there, the one over here, which we had multiple light switches for in the past. Um, and you can control all from your phone, right? It's kind of cool. We've connected this thing now, right? I think we know where this one's going. Honeywell and the nice, just change it to set the, the, you know, the, the temperature. It works. It's completely viable. So we added more expression and context, right? Wi-Fi for communication, uh, temperature, humidity sensor, and IR sensor, right? What did, that, what did that give us? The team over at Nest said, okay, let's put some input in there. You still can touch the dial. There's a touch screen. Um, they mashed this all up in this little, I call these little formulas, algorithms, right? Magical algorithms. And they connected it. And what came out of it is, you know, who has one of these? I bet you there's a lot of people in here. Everybody's, no, really? Come on, guys. All right. Um, so if you guys are familiar with Nest, it, uh, you know, it's even more connected than that light bulb. Not only is it connected to your network and to your phone, it's self-aware in a sense, right? It connects to the cloud by itself. It learns when you're in and out of the room. It sets a schedule. It finds a temperature that's perfect for you. And in reality, it's, it's getting kind of smarter. So we've, we've connected this device. This is one that I worked on. So now we're saying, okay, let's add sensors to this thing. We took a traditional Xbox and a controller where you navigated a world with analog inputs. And we said, okay, we're going to put a mic on it. We're going to put an RGB camera on it. We're going to put a depth sensor and an IR laser source. We're going to flood this room full of lasers, right? Great sensors, but what do we do with it? Then we added a bunch more complexity, and we said, OK, well, we have human as the input now. We have this Xbox thing that allows you to have rich graphics and display and have a feedback loop with the consumer, and, and audio. So we started giving it even more expression to the sensors. And if anyone's familiar with Connect, it allows us to do 
even early on, things like fitness and virtual reality and augmented reality or augmented, what was it, virtual, I don't know, I can't even remember now. Um, it allows people to become more intertwined with the digital and physical world. But again, it's, you know, there's something in common with all these things. I kind of call them the digitization of things, not really the internet of things. Um, they're smarter connected objects. We maybe digified the human, we took the nest, we took a light bulb, but they're not talking to each other yet, right? There's no chaining of the conversation. So if I'm telling a story, these are all vertical stories. It's my phone talks to my light bulb, my nest talks to my iPhone, my body talks to the TV. But none of it's actually been intertwined. They don't talk to each other. So we've kind of talked about this this morning. So what's happening next? Well, the sensors that I showed you before were kind of simple, right? Um, and we are very vertical scenarios. But now we're trying to create stories where you have, this is just a sample of the sensors available today and that are being developed. And you start saying, how do you pick and choose out of all these? What expressions and context do they give to the stories we're trying to create? And where do they go, right? So now it's like we just, we connect, we're connecting things in verticals and it's getting a little more complicated. So the stories are getting a little erratic. So something I work on uh, back in, in the motherland in Seattle is what I call modern storytelling. And it's how do you define out of that list of sensors or characters uh, who's, what story you're telling and, and what expressions do they have? You know? uh, what are their abilities? What are their powers? And how do they bring something to the conversation? And then how do you choose them? Right? What's really interesting now in the world of software, hardware, we see Arduino and 3D printing, and then we embed sensors, and then we connect it, and we connect it to the cloud, it gets really complex. Where do those voices come from? Where do the sensors go? Is it in the software layer? Is that where the magic happens? Does it happen in the hardware itself? Does it happen in the cloud? What's the conversation between the three? And in some cases, it's getting kind of confusing. And so it's how do you play the dance between these things? And so when I think about storytelling, I always think about who's speaking at the time, right? Is it narrated? Is there someone saying, this is what's happening in the world? Like the drone maybe walking behind you and it's narrating your life and so it's controlling the software, the hardware, and the sensors together to do something? Or are there people talking back and forth? Am I typing in my phone, having a conversation with another object, and there's this conversation, but they both have two different voices, right? So where the hell do you start, right? And I don't, I don't think I have a solution. I think I'm gonna show you an approach that we use and it's just kind of a conversation starter because um, this shit's getting complex. So I call it, okay, metaphor number two, um, lenses and filters. And I love taking photography. I love taking photos. Um, it's a big passion of mine. I hope I find more time to do it while I'm here. Um, and this is a technique we use uh, at work a lot. And the idea is there's a user journey, right? They're living, it's, just, it's this living story that's happening all day long. There's context, a million things are happening right now. How do you hit pause, or how do you take a photo at a single moment and analyze that moment and say, here are the sensors I need, here are the expressions that I need, here's what that thing is supposed to be talking to because I'm creating an experience over here. And so we'll walk through some use cases for that. And so on the lenses side, and these are just a sample of the ones we're using on a current project, but there's lots of lenses. So we talk about switching the camera lens on your, you know, which one do I pick for the right moment in the right user experience journey? And so three of the big ones that I really like are context, motion, and mobility. And this kind of leads to some of the wearable conversations you're gonna hear today. And so context today has really been driven by location and time. We do a lot of GPS work, we talk about where you are, on what Wi-Fi network, what IP address, what time of day it is. And we do a lot of magical things today based on just location and time, and it drives some context. But then we start adding those sensors in, and now you have a character in your conversation that can say, I'm environmentally aware, I'm situationally aware. I know you're in this room, I know it's dark outside. I know maybe based on your heart rate, how stressed out you are right now, right? I'm starting to get a little bit more context. So how is that person speaking? Motion is kind of a big one, right? There's magical stuff happening just with an accelerometer and a gyro and a magnetometer. Um, understanding and then connect falls really well in this thing. How do you understand what a person's doing? You know, are they sitting, standing, are they kneeling? Is there arm, where are their arms? Like, can I digify a person at that moment where I took that picture and understand digitally uh, their, their being, right? And how do I use that as part of the storytelling? Um, and then mobility. So kind of the, the, big, the big thing here, right? Life is not I'm sitting at a computer and I'm doing something and there's this magical thing. I also think mobility is when we're doing this and we're walking around all day long that it's still kind of not mobile. It's kind of just you stop. Like how many people stop on the street and it's just like, oh, let me just finish this thing and then someone runs into you, right? It kind of killed the whole mobility. One of the, one of the things we talk about is 
like never break my stride in my life. Like we kind of talked about how we're now mobile, so we're out in the world. We're now we're just doing this and we're, we're stopping and we're hitting things and you kind of, we just added more stop points along this journey. We allowed you to get out in the world, but now we're not actually making it fluid enough. And so what does it mean to be connected? And then I think we talked about this a couple years ago, Harold, like how does it be, how do you get unconnected? But how do you still have these digital things helping you along the way? So we have these lenses, right? And they say, what filters do I put on these lenses? The Instagram users in the world love their filters, but like the physical guys, you know, they screw on their little filters and try to get the composition uh, just right. And so I, I really like to talk about two. It's the approach, and I, I call it companion or companionship. Uh, on the approach filter, is it discrete, right? So if I'm gonna, if you really need to get a message on your Pebble watch right now that you're wearing, how discreet is it, right? Like they're, they're trying to solve the discrete problem and they're trying to say, oh, I just kind of glance down, uh, just the right information in the right time. It's not a speaker, it's not making this big noise. It's about discretion, it's about being discreet in your life. Uh, it's a watch, so it wears very discreet sometimes. It could be a gaudy, huge like Rolex watch, but it's not that discreet. Um, how verbose can the character be? How loud can they be? How much language do they have? Do they have a small screen? Do they have an LED, right? How expressive can they actually be in communicating to you? What color do they use? Uh, so when you talk about these characters, these sensors are giving them really weird characteristics, but how do you know at what moment what they're gonna say and how they communicate to you or help you? Companionship's kind of my favorite one right now. Um, we talk about companion devices. Uh, it's a companion to your Windows phone or it's a companion to your iPhone. The Pebble Watch is a companion. They have it on their site a lot. And I think it's, that's a physical companion, right? It's a piece of hardware that's a companion to another piece of hardware. Nike running watches, fuel bands, all that kind of stuff, heart rate monitors, you know, Garmin straps. They're, they're companions to another hardware device. But we really like to think about it as companionship in the sense of like a relationship, an actual companion. So if, if this, you saw that list of sensors, heart rate monitor, skin temperature, galvanic skin response, mood, I think we saw some of the brain stuff last year. Um, this character in your story now actually can feed off of you. It's not this physical thing. It, it has this like emotional state to it in some cases, it's like ghost in the shell, it gets a little really scary. But uh, it can create a relationship to help you. Hey, it seems like you're stressed out. Or like, hey, your heart rate's really high, what's going on? Or you, you know, maybe this is on the borderline of creepy, but our characters are having a better voice. So what is that companionship? Like, do I see this thing, like Siri in my, on my wrist, as this, my buddy? I can't leave home without this person. I talk to it. I have this conversation with it. And the relationship changes from this thing about, I, here's a task, go complete this task, and then come back to me, to I have a conversation with you all day long, and it's learning about me, and I'm doing something with it. It's getting complex, right? So like we have all these things that we have to kind of uh, navigate. Whoops, wrong way. All right, so a couple, a couple of use cases um, that you can apply some of these filters to. Running, big scenario, lots of people building cool wearable products for fitness and running and walking and pedometers. It's very, a very hot space right now. Um, so this is a picture that I didn't take. It's really well crafted by Nike. Um, but this is a moment in time. Somebody took this picture and it, it encapsulates something. And the question to design for these sensors is, what, what, what is this experience? What superpowers does this person need Who's talking to them? Who's helping them? What noise? What information? Does she really want to have a text message sent to her right now? What's she focusing on? Is she trying to be motivated? Is she trying to get to her goals, her tasks? Now it gets complex. We don't have to read this. It's an eye chart. Um, so you should apply the filters and the lenses. Or you try to. You try different permutations. All we do back up in the lab is like try permutations, prototype with Arduino, and see, hey, was that ever useful? No, that's really annoying. Don't buzz me every five seconds. Like, or don't connect me to the cloud when I'm running. I want to be offline, right? So you look at mobility. Okay, so in this scenario, they're unconnected because they didn't take their phone. Some run most runners hate taking their phone with them because it's heavy, it's distracting. They like to be unconnected. But there's a GPS signal. Let's put a GPS in that device. Let's, match, let's just say that. So it doesn't have rich maps, but it still knows context, it knows vectors, it knows where you're going. Okay, so let's go context. I know you're outdoors. Awesome. I know you're in direct sunlight. Great. Uh, the ambient temperature, it's hot outside. Your body temperature, it's getting kind of, you know, it's pretty good. You're pretty good for your run. You're outside in the city park. It's the afternoon. It's windy because I got a sensor that tells me how windy it is outside. I know the altitude. And then I go in motion. So I know you're running. She's got that posture where her arm's up and she's kind of in forward stride. 
I know her arms are moving like vigorously, right? You can do all this stuff with an accelerometer and a little bit of machine learning in real time to just be like, what is her context? What is her context? What is her context? I know her pace, her calories, her heart rate. I know how tired she is because I know how far she's gone in correlation to those things. So you start correlating all these things together, it gets kind of scary, but it gets kind of awesome, right? Because what you distill out of this is really simple sentences for your story. So I know exactly where you are. I know how your arm is. So let's, let's start with the three things, right? The cloud and the connected service is going, okay, what does this person need? They probably need navigation. They probably want some wayfinding. And they want me to turn everything else off. And only her kid can get through because the system knows who, who's important to her and what's important to her. Right? So there's a person watching over. That could be the drone even, right? If you can work that fast. And it goes, great. So the service side says, I'm going to quiet her life down so she can focus on what she's trying to accomplish. The physical side, great. The industrial designers in the room go, awesome. So I have all this context. I know how sweaty it's going to be. I know how hot she's getting. I know how tight she's wearing the device. I know where she's wearing it. The orientation of the device is on her inner wrist, is on her arm, is it here, is it here? You know, like you can start putting that context onto it. And then the software device goes, well, maybe I was a Pebble watch, right? And you were wearing me all day. And then you just started running, right? There was no mode. You just started running. And it automatically switches its display to high contrast mode and large text and font appears and all the other noise goes away. And now, because she's outside and the sunlight's going to kill your screen, uh, we flip over, right? We, I, we adapt in real time because this person's life is always in motion. If we hit pause at any moment, we try to create these moments. And there's like a, it kind of feels like you have a superpower for a sec. You just start running and all of a sudden, this thing starts morphing. And then you go to the companionship. Now it's a fitness motivator. I trust this thing that I run, it's, it's got my back, right? It's going to motivate me knowing my distance, my heart rate, my posture. I can keep on going for hours on this stuff, by the way. Um, OK, so here's one like closer to home. Good, good for time, too. I'm usually bad at that. Um, so Xbox, great. So let's go to the home. Let's hit pause at this moment. Lovely family with their awesome popcorn. And they're, they're going to go watch a movie. So this year, we worked really hard. And this is kind of magic. You just say Xbox, play Inception. and plays Inception. I don't know, that's kind of cool, right? There's a voice. This thing can see me. It knows who's talking. So if she says Inception, it doesn't work because she shouldn't be watching that movie, maybe. But when he does it, it has access to it, so it just cuts through. Oh, I know Dad's there because I can ID the faces in the room and all that kind of stuff. I don't know, that's kind of magic, right? But that doesn't really apply any of the stuff I was talking about. It's kind of the old world, the now world, right? OK, so now it's really complicated. So the stuff that we work on in conjunction with any moment in your life. So we work on all these different moments. So clearly, the living room is really important to us. We start mashing these things together. And we start saying, what is the story for this scenario? Who's in the room? Who's helping? Who's narrating the story? So the Xbox goes, I know what you're watching. You're watching Inception. That's cool. I know everything about Inception. I know what, where you are in the movie, what the scene looks like. I know what the image looks like. I know the noisy. I know how, where it is in the sound. I know how loud the room is. And then the Kinect goes, this is where the, the fun stuff goes. I know who's in the room. I can see Harold. I can see Kristen. I can see Joe. And I see where they're moving. And I see where they're sitting. Um, I know how bright the room is. The one thing we never used Connect for on the first point was uh, that it could actually tell how bright the room was. Um, and it talks to the light bulb, right? And it goes, hey, they're watching Inception. And it's currently this bright in the room. Adjust yourself now in real time. They don't have to fiddle with your phone, right? Um, the Jambox, the guys over at, at uh, they're doing really cool stuff. We're working with them really closely. Um, they can direct sound you know, directly to different people, different signal sources. So the Kinect can go, I know where you are, and I know where you are, and I know where you are. And it's it, what we call beam forming. It picks these beams. So when you talk, we have a conversation. When you talk, we have a conversation. It can separate the two. Then we start adding in, I know what you're watching, and I know that you know, she's, he's maybe hard of hearing, and she doesn't want to hear it so loud. And I start saying, you get this stream, you get that stream, and we start like, localizing your audio. Oh, and then you can add the little bonus of like Nest and be like, well, you know, you're watching a movie, so let's just like hit the temperatures down a little bit, right? This is what I like, this is where it gets really complex, but it's the Internet of Things, right? Where I think today, these are all Internet of its thing. It connects it, and, that, and, that's, and that's about it. Um, nine seconds, great. Um, so I, I just kind of want to leave it on the note of take your pictures, right? Like, think about when you're designing for your consumer, like, where do you want to be when you take the picture? Are you standing above them, below them, in front of them? I kind of like the Burning Man uh, video. Where he's like, I just laid down in front of him, and I, I, I just watched him, right? I took a picture of him. What, what, what's in that moment? 
and then write your stories, right? Figure out what sensors, what expressions your characters need to have. Are they blind? Can they hear? Um, can they tell what foot you're on? Can they, see, can they see you, right? And that quickly helps us like, navigate a little bit of the Internet of Things, right? But it helps us tease out how to tell these stories. Um, I love this picture because it combines both metaphors. And I found it on Google the other day. <laughs> it's a lens and it's a heart. It's M-Love. It's perfect. Um, I don't know. Thank you. <laughs>